let's look at how themes apply across a multi-tenanted environment. One of the major benefits of Jaspersoft is its multi-tenancy. Out of the box, we get multi-tenancy. You can see the organization login here, and that's really something that you see in the UI, but if you have a single sign-on solution, uh, this happens automatically, so we don't actually see a lot of multi-tenancy organizations entering their organization here. We will today for this demo and this walkthrough, but you wouldn't normally see that again because it would happen seamlessly through your uh, single sign in your SSO. So let's set some uh, the stage here a little bit. I'm running Jaspersoft version 6.3. I have the default uh, theme enabled right now. When I log in, you'll see I've got a couple other themes that we've worked on in a previous video. I'm not going to walk through how to create these themes, but I'm going to use this theme to um, create a multi-tenanted theme. And I've kind of already done that just in testing, uh, but we'll, we'll walk through how to create them. So I've got my overrides custom. I've got an images folder. I've got a Pepsi and Coke logo set aside, and I have a Coke organization and a Pepsi organization. Let's just look at those real quick. If I go to manage users, I've added the organizations, Coke and Pepsi, and then under Pepsi, I have a Pepsi user, and under Coke, I have a Coke user. And again, if I go back to my repository inside of Pepsi and Coke, and again, I did this manually, but the SSO can do all of this automatically, and I'll show you a couple things we can do to make that easier. Under the Coke uh, I, themes, I have default, and under the Pepsi themes, I have default. Um, and remember, there is a folder template here. So in the future, if I get a new Dr. Pepper or RC Cola or something that comes along, I can put the new theme that we're about to develop here. And for what we're looking at now, the only thing that would change in that theme would be some of the colors and then their logo. So I can have all the theme overrides I want. And then there's specific stuff I would just go in and touch up. And that's essentially what we're going to do now. So that's our groundwork. Let's look at the actual theme itself. Again, I'm going to use my demo theme that I created earlier. Uh, it's here. It's in another video. Very straightforward. I've got my overrides custom. And all I've done uh, outside what we already did, we modified the banner before. All I've done is I've added a logo um, setting here, logo CSS. How did I find that is really what we care about. And I'll go to um, the dev tools, which I said you press F12 to get to or, or uh, uh, Control Shift I in Windows or uh, Command Option I in uh, Mac or OS X, and then you uh, you hit this little inspect icon here, and then up at the top you find your icon, <clears throat> and it says logo div ID logo um, is what I did. I clicked on it, you see how it kind of highlights it for me. And if I come over here, you can see uh, pound logo, which is by ID, uh, background colon URL. The lo URL's uh, logo.png right now. No repeat. Um, margins and then transparent background. So I'm, I'm, I just replicated that. I literally just copied this and then uh, I pasted it into my um, demo theme for now, logo background, and I've already entered Pepsi. But I need a Pepsi and a Coke one. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to um, copy this. Let's see if I can actually do a control C, control V. So this one would be Pepsi. Pepsi, and I've taken the Pepsi logo and I've made it, um, if you look here, I've made it about 22 um, pixels high and then whatever width it was when I kind of, down, wherever I downloaded it from. Um, so I'm going to take that Pepsi logo and I'm going to make sure it's in the Pepsi theme. Um, it looks like it is there, so I'll leave it and now I'll do the same thing for Coke. Grab this. Coke, I'll name Coke theme and Pepsi theme instead. And then with Coke, I need to grab the Coke logo. Put the Coke in there. And then if I go into my overrides custom, I'll change this to Coke. And again, this could be called logo, and I could just change the logo itself to be named logo.png. It's all you know, you have 101 different options here, but just to make it, you know, kind of clear, I'm going to do it this way. Okay, so now I've got my two um, two themes set up. I need to right click. Oh, I want to change the background color too. So I went and looked at the Coke background colors just to make it a little bit more. I'll change at least the header 
there. So that's my Coke background. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me get the uh, Pepsi one here. Let me grab Pepsi's color too. I just went to the image and grabbed the color just so it's a little bit, and then we can make sure it's changing. Okay, so same process as before. Uh, grab both these icons, not the folder they're in, and you uh, zip them up. And you know, I'm just gonna leave them there this time. I think I saved everything, so we'll make sure. Coke theme, theme to zip. And now, I'll come back here. And since I'm super user, um, I can go into their organization and, and do this, but any administrator of their organization can do this. So um, if Pepsi had an admin, he could come in and, or she could come in and do this, what I'm about to do. Um, but I don't, uh, I don't need to. So Pepsi theme, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll grab my Pepsi theme, make sure it's okay. Get my images and then Coke theme. All right, now I'll set this as active for that organization only. Set as active theme. And now if I log out, I say Coke, Coke user, Coke. Oh, no, my password is super secret password. Log in. And it's a little more pink than I thought it would be, but you know, that's the Coke logo and anything else I modified. Now let's see if I log out. And one more time. It tries to remember who I am, so I have to trick it here. Pep. Oh. Pepsi user, same password. And now I get my Pepsi with ah <laughs> the color that they wanted, which looks a lot like the color that was originally. So Pepsi and Coke have their own logos. Again, this is out of the box functionality. I had to modify a CSS file a few lines to get this to happen with at least their own logo. But the same thing goes for all the copyrights and things like that. They're either in localization files or they're in the CSS. And if you look, Pepsi, when they log in, only sees Pepsi in public. So they don't even know Coke exists. Uh, they can't get to the Coke theme. They don't know it's there. They have no idea that it exists. And um, one more thing, you know, doing that, it took a couple steps. I can narrow those steps down um, by logging in a super user again, or, or an administrative user of the whole system. And if I go to view repository, um, I can go into organizations and folder template. And this is really powerful. I can do anything I want here. And let's just, uh, let's just take a shortcut here and we'll say, um, add themes. Oops. Let's see. So we have our default theme. I can add a folder here. I can add, let me see, what do I want to add? Temp, ad hoc components. I could add a, a data set here, something like that. Let's just add a folder and put this as demo, press add. And then when I go back to my repository, I can add an organization. So I'll add an organization called um, RC Cola, let's say. If I go back to my repository, that folder is already there for me um, under RC Cola because it was in the template. So I can do a lot of work in advance in this templating system that saves me just a little bit of time in what we just discussed. So uh, multi-tenancy, very powerful. Uh, applying those themes to the tenants, uh, very powerful. They don't know about each other. They don't know what the default theme is for anybody else, but yet it looks like their own if you send them into the full product. Um, and of course, theming is just standard CSS and, uh, you know, some HTML, some CSS, and then of course, uh, image files. So very straightforward.